Our dear boys and girls, you're welcome to our lesson number 20. But then before we look at content for lesson 20, let's have a look at, or let's go through the corrections of our previous lesson. Uh, you had a lesson with Jambala and gave you an activity of over five questions. And we want to have possible responses to these questions. One, our question one is, Name the official who organized the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85. Name the official who organized the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85. I guess you all passed that. That is none other than Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, or simply say Otto von Bismarck. And number two, our question says, why did the powerful countries of Europe attend the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85. Why did the powerful countries of Europe attend the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85? I'm sure you also have correct responses to this. One, to end the scramble for colonies. And you know what scramble is all about. Two, to control outbreak of war over colonies in Africa. To control outbreak of war over colonies in Africa. Number three, you can also say to set up rules and guidelines for colonial acquisitions. To set up rules and guidelines for colonial acquisitions. Point four, we can also say that to find peaceful ways of dividing up Africa. To find peaceful ways of dividing up Africa among European countries, of course. The other one, you can say, uh, actually, our question three says, how did the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85 control outbreak of war over colonies in Africa? How did the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85 control outbreak of war over colonies in Africa? Point one, we can say, by setting up rules and guidelines for colonial acquisition. Number two, we can say, by dividing up Africa among European powers. Uh, number three can simply say by sharing Africa or by sharing Africa among European powers. Uh, our question for boys and girls says that right in the two outcomes of the Berlin Conference to Africa, what were the consequences, the repercussions, the effects, the results for the Berlin Conference? Uh, in other words, can look at the other question. We can also state it in a different way. For example, how did the Berlin Conference affect Africa? How did the Berlin Conference affect Africa? What do you think are the possible responses? One, uh, Africa was partitioned, or someone, someone else can say, Africa was shared among European superpowers. Point two, we can say that it led to demarcation of Africa, or it led to boundary fixing in Africa or fixing of countries in Africa. All those are correct responses. Uh, boys and girls, the other point we can say that the Berlin Conference led to loss of Africa's independence. And you know what independence is all about. Independence means total freedom from external influence or total freedom from colonial rule. So the Berlin Conference actually led to, led, led to loss of Africa's independence. Uh, boys and girls can also say that it led to loss of land among Africans. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the other point. Tribes of the same origin uh, tribes of the same origin and in the same geographical location were separated. Tribes of the same origin and in the same geographical location were separated. The other, the other question, boys and girls, and our last question says, write two ways through which European countries got colonies in Africa. Write two ways through which European countries got colonies in Africa. Uh, you looked at this, Mr. Chambala, and I'm sure you have very correct answers. Now, we want to look at how colonial masters uh, got colonies in Africa. One, by signing treaties or agreements. There were so many agreements that were signed in Africa to establish or extend colonial rule in Africa. 
you can talk about the so many agreements that looked at in P5 and P6. Uh, we also have using collaborators, and you know who collaborators are. Actually, we're going to look at the meaning of collaborators. And I'm also sure you looked at the meaning of collaborators in lesson 19. Uh, the other point, boys and girls, is through missionary work. Missionaries are also used to establish colonial influence in Africa. The other point, we can talk about using force or violence. So that there was, I mean, uh, force was also used in areas where colonialists, I mean, failed to convince African chiefs and kings to accept their rule. Uh, the other point is using trade companies, using trade companies. Uh, boys and girls, today we want to look at our lesson number 20. And our lesson today, and our subheading today is African reaction to colonial rule. Or we can also say African response to colonial rule. But then before we go any further, I want to set targets for us. Boys and girls, by the end of this lesson, African response to colonial rule, we should be able, one, to give the two forms of African reaction to colonial rule in Africa. Number two, you should be able to give the meaning of resistors and collaborators, or resistance and collaboration. Number three, you should be able to give examples of colonial resistors in Africa and also examples of colonial collaborators in Africa. Number four, you should be able to give the reasons for collaboration or reasons why Africans, I mean, some Africans collaborated with colonial masters. And the other one is you should be able to give reasons why Africans resisted colonial rule in Africa. Finally, you should be able to give reasons why African resistance failed. Reasons why African Christians failed. So those are our targets. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to you should be able to give me all that. Boys and girls, when we talk about African reaction to colonial rule, I want to report to you that there were two forms of African response or African reaction to colonial rule in Africa. One, some Africans resisted. And two, some Africans collaborated. We are saying that there were two forms of African response or reaction to colonial rule. One, some Africans collaborated and those were collaborators. And two, another section of Africans resisted. And they are called, or they were called, resistors. Now, there are two important words that are going to use here. Collaboration and resistance. Uh, we want to look at collaborators. When we talk about collaborators, we are meaning the people who accepted, who are accepted to work or who worked with colonial masters. Therefore, who were collaborators? Boys and girls, collaborators were the individuals or communities that accepted the establishment of colonial rule in their areas. We are saying that collaborators were individuals or people, can call them communities, that accepted the establishment of colonial rule in Africa. So we have important or key words to use. You can use the word accepted or who worked with. You can also say collaborators were individuals who, who accepted to work with colonial masters in their areas. Uh, we want to look at examples of collaborators. Who were those individuals and communities that accepted the establishment of colonial rule in Africa? So on this side we shall have individual, and on our right we shall have community. Now, who were these individuals? One of them we had, Sir Apollo Kagua. Boys and girls, Af all over Africa we had collaborators in different areas. One of them was Sir Apollo Kagua. The, the, the agent of uh, Infant Auditua, who signed the 1900 Uganda Agreement on behalf of the Infant Kabaka. So the Baganda 
collaborated with the British. The other individual was Omuka Makasagama. You know, Omuka Makasagama was all accepted to sign an agreement. He became a collaborator to the British colonial masters in Uganda. Omuka Makabalega was the, was the Omukama of Toro Kingdom. The other collaborators, boys and girls, we had Semeika Kunguru. Semeika Kunguru he, he did not come from Eastern Uganda, but he, he decided to leave Uganda and he went to Eastern Uganda and he actually established colonial rule in Eastern Uganda. Or he helped to extend colonial rule to Eastern Uganda. And actually his headquarters were in Budaka, were established in Budaka. Uh, boys and girls, another collaborator we had, Nuwa Mbaguta. Nuwa Mbaguta was also a colonial collaborator from Western Uganda. Uh, boys and girls, we also have Label Lenana. Label Lenana of the Maasai community also collaborated with, with colonial masters in Africa. We also have Nabongo Mimia. And some people call him Nabongo Mimias, but Mimias is just an area of influence for this chief. So Nabongo Mwimia well, I mean, was a, a chief or a ruler of Wanga Kingdom in Kenya. Uh, we also had other colonial collaborators like Chief Rumanika, Chief Rumanika of Karagwe. So the people of Karagwe collaborated or accepted the establishment of colonial rule in their areas. Now, boys and girls, we want to look at reasons for collaboration. Why did these many communities in Africa accept the establishment of colonial rule in their areas? Why did they accept colonial conquest in their territories? One, they wanted material gifts. So many of these African chiefs and kings that accepted colonial influence in their areas wanted material gifts like guns, clothes, to mention but a few. Number two, they wanted protection. So many African chiefs and kings collaborated with the British just because they wanted protection. For example, the Kabaka of Uganda are collaborated with the British just because they wanted protection against their traditional enemies. For example, Bunyoro Kitara. And look at the, uh, the Maasai community of Labon Lenana. They collaborated with the British just because they wanted protection against their traditional enemies, the Maasai. The other point, boys and girls, is some feared colonial powers. A case in point is Chief Rumanika of Karagwe. Chief Rumanika of Karagwe simply feared colonial conquest. He feared colonial powers. That's why he had to accept colonial rule in his area. He willingly and excitedly gave away his power and authority just because he feared colonial conquest or colonial powers. The other point, boys and girls, is resistance of traditional enemies. Now, some communities collaborated just because their traditional enemies had resisted. For example, the Baganda collaborated with the British in Uganda just because the Banyoro, their traditional enemies, had resisted. Similarly, the Maasai in Kenya had actually collaborated with the British colonial masters just because their traditional enemies, the, Mas uh, the Kikuyu, had resisted. Boys and girls, uh, we want to look at another section of people. These ones actually never accepted the establishment of colonial rule in their areas. For them, they refused it. They never accepted it. So these people are called resistors. Now, who are resistors? Remember, we have resistors in science, but we're talking about resistors, individuals or people or communities that rejected or that refused the establishment of colonial rule in their areas. Resistors were individuals or communities that opposed, that rejected, that never accepted, that refused the establishment of colonial rule in their areas. We want to use the following words. So if they ask to give the meaning of resistors, these are the words you can use. One, you can say opposed, rejected, or fought against. Now, 
There were so many communities in Africa that actually fought against colonial masters. In Uganda, we have so many of them. In East Africa at large and Africa, we had many communities and individuals that opposed the establishment of colonial rule in their territories. One of them, we had Omukama Kabalega, Obunyoro. Boys and girls, Omukama Kabalega was a notorious resistor in Uganda. He resisted the establishment of colonial rule in Bunyoro Kitara, or in Bunyoro Kingdom. He went as far as staging Nyangire rebellion. So he was a notorious resistor in Africa. Uh, the, other, the other resistor we have, or we had, is Chief Awich. Chief Awich was also a serious and prominent resistor in Africa. He, is, he was the chief of Acholi by then. He went as far as taking the Lamoji Rebellion. In P5, he looked at the Lamoji Rebellion, the community that, the community that staged the Lamoji Rebellion, an individual that spearheaded this rebellion. That was Chief Awich. You know the causes of Lamoji Rebellion. I don't want to go deep there. I refer you to our P5 work, boys and girls. Uh, the other colonial resistor, boys and girls, we had Kabaka Mwanga. Kabaka Mwanga was also a colonial resistor. He went as far as, as, far as staging a revolt. He staged what he called Mwanga Revolt. But unfortunately, his revolt was easily crushed. It was crushed with relative ease. The other resistor, boys and girls, is, was found in West Africa. He was another notorious resistor known as Jaja of Opobo. Jaja of Opobo. Jaja of Opobo was the king, was the ruler, was the leader of the Igbo land in Nigeria. There, in Nigeria, there is an area known as the Niger Delta. So the entire Niger Delta was manned or controlled by Jaja of Opobo. So for him, he resisted colonial rule because he wanted to protect the Niger Delta, that commercial property. Uh, the other, uh, the other resistor boys and girls, we had Chief Lubengula of Indebele. We also had Priest Kinjekitli or Chief Kinjekitli Bokero Ngwale. He looked at this gentleman in P6. He is also a notorious resistor in Africa. He staged a rebellion known as a Maji Maji Rebellion uh, in Tanzania. Actually, the most serious and widespread rebellion was Maji Maji Rebellion, staged by Chief King Kitile Bokero in Wale. The other resistor, boys and girls, we had Samora Ture. Samora Ture of the Madinka community. Samora Ture of the Madinka community was another colonial resistor, a notorious one. We also had Chief Nkwahawa. Chief Mkwawa of the Hehe people in Tanzania was another notorious resistor. He went as far as staging one of the first rebellions in East Africa, known as Hehe Rebellion. Boys and girls, we want to, uh, we want to look at the reasons for resistance. Why did these communities, why did these individuals decide to stage, I mean, to resist colonial influence in their territories. Why? As opposed to collaborators, resistors refused the establishment of colonial rule in their areas. Why? One, they wanted to protect their, one, their land. You know, land is, some, is a very, very valuable asset. So these individuals opposed or resisted the colonial rule just because they wanted to protect their land. They wanted to protect their land. Number two, they wanted to protect their independence. In Genesis, we said that the word independence means total, inf total freedom from colonial influence. So these communities wanted to protect their independence. The other one, they wanted to protect their communities or they wanted to side with their communities. I am sure they had a reason or their reasons hold some water. Uh, the other, other reasons, boys and girls, 
they wanted to protect their property. We talked about Jaja of Opopo who wanted to protect his commercial gains, his commercial property, that's the Niger Delta, which is famous for oil mining, and a chief oil mining area in Nigeria. So this man, Jaja of Opopo, and other resistors really had reasons, uh, clear reasons for opposing colonial influence in their territories. Um, boys and girls, we also want to say that they wanted to protect their wealth or their gains. Most of these kings and chiefs had accumulated a lot of wealth. So they feared to give in their power and authority to colonial masters in order to protect their gains, call it wealth. The other point, boys and girls, is traditional enemies had collaborated. Remember, in, in, at first we said that some communities collaborated just because their traditional enemies had, had resisted, I mean had collaborated. Similarly, some communities or some individuals resisted colonial influence just because their traditional enemies had resisted. Look here. The Banyoro resisted colonial rule in their area just because the Baganda, who are their traditional enemies, had collaborated. The Masai, or I mean the Kikuyu, had actually resisted or resisted colonial rule just because their traditional enemies, the Masai, had collaborated. So their traditional enemies had collaborated. For them, they had to resist. Uh, boys and girls, the other points we can also talk about to preserve their culture, to preserve their culture. Culture simply refers to norms and values of a given society. So these individuals wanted to preserve their norms and values. The other one is to preserve their power and authority. Unlike collaborators who willingly and excitedly gave away their power and authority, resistors refused or never accepted to give away their power and authority because they wanted to maintain it. The other point is they feared to lose respect among natives. Yes, I want to report to you that our chiefs and kings are well respected. Look at how the Baganda and other communities respect their kings and chiefs. Now, these chiefs actually feared to lose respect among natives. Uh, boys and girls, it is quite unfortunate that much as African chiefs and kings, as well as their communities at large, tried to resist colonial influence in Africa, they failed, unfortunately. Their resistance was easily crushed. Look at the Nyangri Rebellion. Look at the Lamoji Rebellion. Look at the Mwanga Revolt. Look at the Hehe. Look at and so many other rebellions in, in Africa. They were easily crushed. They were easily defeated. Now we want to look at reasons why colonial, I mean, why colonial rule failed in Africa. I mean, we want to look at reasons why resistance to colonial rule in Africa failed. Why did African African chiefs and kings? Kings, or why did in the African Africans fail to resist colonial rule in Africa? Why did they fail? I'm sure you know some of the reasons why African chiefs and kings, or why Africans failed to resist colonial rule. One, Africans were not united. Africans were not united, and this made them to be defeated one by one. I want to I remind you that even when the Portuguese came to Africa, they easily defeated Africans with relative ease, just because Africans are not united. Similarly, colonial masters in Africa easily defeated Africans because we were not united. We were not speaking the same language. We were not under the same umbrella, and hence were easily defeated. The other point, boys and girls, we can talk about Africans had inferior weapons. Africans were using weapons like sticks, stones, to mention but a few. So our weapons were very inferior, as opposed to those of colonial masters. Colonial masters had stronger and sophisticated weapons. Weapons of mass destruction, like muskets, AK-47s, to mention but a few. So Africans were, African reasons were easily defeated because Africans had inferior weapons. 
The other point, boys and girls, is Africans had, I mean, Africans had power fighting skills, poor fighting skills. We are sorry there is a problem in there. We are saying Africans had power fighting skills, but it is supposed to be Africans had uh, poor fighting skills. Our tactics were very wanting. They were very poor. Even when Africans tried to use the gorilla tactics of hit and run, still these skills did, could not help them. So they were easily defeated just because we had poor fighting skills or poor fighting styles. Call them poor fighting tactics. Boys and girls, the other point is some Africans betrayed their fellow Africans. The other reason why Africans' resistance was easily defeated is that Africans, some Africans betrayed their fellow Africans by collaborating. Look at in Uganda. The Baganda are betrayed the Banyuru by collaborating. Go to Kenya. The Maasai betrayed the, the, I mean, the Maasai betrayed the Kikuyu by collaborating. If all African communities had opposed it, I believe we would have easily defeated colonial masters in our territories. Uh, boys and girls, uh, I want to say thank you so much for listening to me. I am very sure you have been able uh, to, to actually grasp important or pertinent issues. Uh, we set our targets in Genesis. We said by the end of this lesson, you should be able, one, to give forms of African response to colonial rule, number two, to give the meaning of collaborators and resistors, number three, to give examples of resistance and collaborators, number four, to give reasons for resistance and collaboration, and number five, to give reasons why African resistance failed in Africa. Thank you so much for listening to us. May God bless you. Thank you.